Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another amazing episode of the Stephen Jarvis and Friends podcast. Today, I'm talking about the 2007 Zodiac film, which was based on the murders perpetrated by the Zodiac killer, who still has not been found, and the case has still not been solved. But before I get into that, please go check out my friends at the Nonsensical Nonsense podcast. I was just on their podcast recently. I do believe it was on Saturday. Bunch of great guys. Hopefully you enjoy their work. They lay it all out on the line. They are kind of edgy, but you know what? So are we in a way. Also go check out my buddies Mark and Brian at Talking Shit. Go check out Kyle Curtis Flett at Flett's Movies and Pop Culture 13. Go check out Peter Anthony at Peter Anthony Productions on YouTube. And if you want, you can check out a lot of other great podcasts. So let's get into the video. So the Zodiac is a 2007 American non-noir mystery thriller film directed by David Fincher from a screenplay by James Vanderbilt. Based on the nonfiction books by Robert Graysmith, Zodiac 1986, and Zodiac Unmasked 2002, the film stars Jake Gyllenhaal, Mark Ruffalo, Robert Downey Jr., with Anthony Edwards, Brian Cox, Elias Cotis, Denal Logue, John Carroll Lynch, Chloe Savine, Philip Baker Hall, and Dermont Mulroney. In supporting roles. The film tells the story of the manhunt for the Zodiac Killer, a serial murderer who terrorized the San Francisco Bay Area during the late 60s and early 70s, taunting police with letters, blood-stained clothing, and ciphers mailed to newspapers. The case remains one of the United States' most infamous unsolved crimes. Fincher, Vanderbilt, and producer Bradley J. Fisher spent 18 months conducting their own investigation and research into the Zodiac murders. Fincher employed the digital Tom Thompson Viper film stream camera to photograph most of the film with traditional high-speed film cameras used for slow-motion murder sequences. Zodiac was released by Paramount Pictures in North America and Warner Brothers Pictures in international markets on March 2, 2007 and received largely mostly positive reviews with praise for its writing, directing, acting, and historical accuracy. The film was nominated for several awards, including the Saturn Best Saturn Award for Best Action Adventure or Thriller Film. It grossed over eight eighty four point seven million worldwide on a budget production budget of sixty five million. In a two thousand sixteen critics poll conducted by the BBC, Zodiac was voted the twelfth greatest film of the twenty first century. And so the movie begins with the first murders which was of Darlene Farron and Mike Mougeot with a handgun at a lover's lane. And then, you know, we find out that Mike was the only one to survive that. Um, And a month later, they start receiving these cryptic ciphers or codes from the Zodiac Killer saying that, you know, if, you crack this code, you'll find my identity. Well, they crack the code and still his identity is not figured out. And this goes on for many years. Uh, Zodiac, he ends up killing um, another woman and viciously stabbing um, her friend or boyfriend in which the boyfriend survives and she dies and they later try and say that you know why is zodiac only focusing mostly on the women making sure that they're dead and not the men um robert graysmith who is played by jake gyllenhaal in this film comes to the conclusion that the zodiac is never gonna announce who he is these ciphers are pretty much just clues that he wants a lot of publicity in what he's doing. We later find out that, you know, he ends up killing a cab driver, 
the police are stumped by this. You know, the ciphers keep getting worse and worse. Uh, one of Robert Graysmith's um, co-workers, Paul Avery, decides to uh, call out the Zodiac in his own way by claiming he is probably um, of the interested in the, the same sex as the Zodiac killer is. Well, the Zodiac killer doesn't like that, so he kind of thinly veils a threatening letter saying, you know, you are doomed from your secret admirer or secret pal. And a lot of people in real life think that Paul Avery had done that because Paul Avery, and, and who knows, maybe he did. I mean, at one point they, they claim that one of the detectives um, from the case had written a letter, one of the Zodiac killer's letters, and it, it's preposterous. You later find out that um, they do include that in the movie. Uh, Dave Toski, who is one of the detectives, him and his uh, partner, Bill Armstrong or Brian Armstrong, I do believe his partner's real life name was, um, are searching the leads. They're trying to run this down well after the last Zodiac letter and after the last Zodiac killing, um, they're watching the movie Dirty Harry, which thinly veils that, you know, Scorpio, the Scorpio killer in the movie Dirty Harry is based off of the Zodiac killer. And what happens is people see Detective Toski out there and ask him, hey, you know, why can't you do what Dirty Harry does? And he jokingly says, oh, yeah, because, you know, he t we can get away without due process, you know, that the criminal doesn't have rights and all that. And Robert Graysmith runs into him and they start talking where Dave Toski even tells him, you know, hey, I can't give you any of the evidence that we have but you can talk to people that may be able to help you better. And Graysmith loses his family because of his obsession. Um, we never really find out who the Zodiac killer is. They point to someone who it could have been, which his name was Arthur Lee Allen. But um, a lot of the times when they did try and figure out if it was him, you know, um, he passed the handwriting samples, but we later find out he's ambidextrous. And in the ending of the film, you see Robert Graysmith track him down to a hardware store where he works as a sales clerk and he looks at Arthur Lee Allen and then walks away and the film ends. We find out that, uh, Paul Avery had died from, uh, I think he had like emphysema and all that. So you hear that, uh, that you find out the case has never been solved, which is true. They still have yet to solve the case. And what's so interesting about this movie is that they do a very good job at following what was accurate and what wasn't. I mean, there's so many different people out there that witnessed or survived um, an attack by the Zodiac Killer, and they give varying descriptions of what he looks like. Um, there's a documentary on Peacock calling saying the myth of the Zodiac Killer, and it, it's good. It's good. Um, there wasn't much of it, it's pretty much a uh, opinions type thing documentary where there there could be some truth to it and there might not be uh, the professor that they interview in that one pretty much says that you know they created the myth of the zodiac killer that most of these murders could be explained as a jealous ex-husband or jealous lover or a friend that decided to say, oh, well, you're going out with my other friend. I wanted you, blah, 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 and all that stuff. So that's a good one to check out. Uh, 
I would definitely, if you haven't seen this film, go check it out. It's it's great. Um, and plus, it's true crime. It's based on true story. I'm sure they kind of messed with a few things, but ultimately, it is very accurate to what had happened. And hopefully one day, we probably by now, the Zodiac Killer, if he's real or was real, he's probably dead by now. So, I mean, I, I think the families of the victims deserve major closure they deserve to know who did this to their loved ones and also to the ones that were his victims you know they were simply uh, and i've heard this before on other podcasts they were simply in the wrong place at the wrong time well how can you be in the wrong place at the wrong time when you're just going about your day and you're just enjoying you know the love you had for your significant other or your friend and you get either murdered or you get attacked you know so it's it's very interesting the way the world is and how stuff like this has happened and granted now there's more ways to look at evidence including handwriting and you know fingerprints, identification, but still they haven't found out who the Zodiac Killer is because he was very meticulous in the way that he did things. Like he made sure that there was no prints left behind. He made sure to be very thorough with what he did. Um, I mean, there's even a part where he has made a kind of like an executioner's mask and he paints the symbol or draws a symbol on it, and it, it it makes you wonder if it wasn't a copycat doing some of this stuff, or if it, there's a theory out there that was Jack the Ripper, supposedly Jack the Ripper is immortal and was able to do these killings, but that's been debunked. The thing that really scares me is how that person was able to just get away scot-free. But at the same time, who's to say it was one person? Who's to say these killing, some of these killings weren't blamed on the Zodiac killer? You know, the Zodiac killer loved being in the public eye. He loved, he or she loved being in, you know, taunting the police he he or she or i'll just call them call them the zodiac killer the zodiac killer loved the publicity they were getting and one thing that you know i don't agree with was that he wanted to take out kids and the, and murder of any kind is not right but when you threaten school children, I don't know how parents were able to allow their kids to go to school then. But at the same time, he never went through with it. So it's like, was he truly ever going to do this? Or was he boasting that, hey, you know, I could do this. I could get away with it. Uh, I'm just going to create so much fear in the citizens of San Francisco, Vallejo, and other places to the point where anyone's going to suspect people just walking by as maybe that's killer, maybe that's killer, maybe I'm the killer, you know, and all that stuff. So it, it's a very interesting movie. It's a very interesting case, one that hasn't been solved. Do I ever believe that it will be? Maybe. I mean, heck, they solved the Golden State Killer, who they found out was an ex-cop. And, you know, this is my theory on the Zodiac Killer. What if it was a cop? I mean, they never looked at it that way. They never, they, in the myth of the Zodiac Killer, they claim uh, that it was 
a park ranger that did the um, killings at... I gotta look this up so I don't screw it up. Um, where he stabbed Brian Hartnell and killed Cecilia Shepard at Lake Berry Berryessa in Napa County. You know, they claimed it was a park ranger that did it. And that because he didn't radio back right away, that would explain why it could have been him. And that's the thing with the Zodiac case. It could have been a lot of people. It could have been one person. Um, or they could have just created the Zodiac killer to kind of make it as one person, even though it could have been multiple. I mean, Son of Sam even said that with his case you know i'm not the only one you know there's many out there yada 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 blah 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 and all that stuff so it's definitely interesting i would love one day to have someone that does true crime podcasts come on here and talk about the case i personally won't do it because i feel that i would not be able to research it very thoroughly to do right by his victim, the Zodiac's victims, and their families that still live with, you know, the grief of not knowing who did this. So that is my review. I give this film a four out of five just because I wish they could have found out who it was. They point to so many people but Robert Graysmith still thinks it's Arthur Lee Allen. So who knows? Maybe it was. We'll never know. Um, but yeah, go check out the nonsensical podcast, nonsense podcast that I was a part of as a guest. Uh, go check out Talking Shit. Go check out Let's Films and Pop Culture 13. Also, go check out Peter Anthony Productions. You can even, if you really want to, go watch Bucket of Chum, where that host does movies based on the shark genre or shark ploitation genre. Uh, I also want to thank you all for subscribing to the channel. We're at 77 subscribers right now. Thank you so very much. We're trying to get to 100. And also, if you want to watch, my episodes you can go to zencaster because i've switched from buzzsprout to zencaster now and they should be redirecting everyone there so thank you so very much hope you all have an amazing week um saturday i won't be doing a live stream because i will be at my mom's wedding so i'll try and make that up for you for my fans but thank you all so very much hopefully you all have a great week great weekend when that comes up. And just remember, stay safe, stay positive, stay humble.